What is going on everybody? Welcome to the second data analysis with Python and Pandas tutorial video. In this video what we're going to be talking about is uh, going over the Pandas basics so you've seen your first Pandas data frame and what we're doing with it but now we're actually going to code it ourselves and go through with it. So if you didn't copy and paste the code from before uh, basically what we're going to have is you can copy and paste that code and then we'll just start with an empty slate here uh, and we don't need IO data either. Okay, so we're going to use basically these four lines here. Pandas as PD again. PD is just kind of shorthand. It's a standard. If you're going to share your code or ask somebody to help you with your code, you probably should use standards. Uh, Matplotlib.pyplot is PLT, standard. Matplotlib import style. Uh, that's so we can quickly make our graph look a little more appealing than the default. So uh, the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is, like, let's say... Um, so a pandas data frame, if you're coming from Python and data frame just isn't sitting right with you for whatever reason, uh, a data frame is a lot like a Python dictionary in its heart, and the way that we can reference it is like a Python dictionary at its heart. So uh, first of all, let's say you're, you're operating a website. Now eventually we'll, we'll get into housing data and stuff like this, but for now we'll just use a really basic example. Let's say you've got a website and you've got some web... I was thinking stats and I typed data and then I... Either one was fine. Anyway, now, uh, so let's say you've got some information here. Let's say the first bit of information is the day. Uh, so day, colon, and then we'll have an, a list here. This will be day one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then after that, maybe you've got uh, visitors. And also, again, if you're not familiar with dictionaries, I have the basics tutorial on dictionaries. Uh, relatively easy to understand if, uh, if you just go visit that tutorial real quick. Visitors, uh, we're not a very popular website, so we don't really have that many visitors. Uh, let's see, 64, 34, I think that's 6, right? Yep, 6. Then finally, uh, bounce rate. So this is the rate of how many people will come to a landing page and leave immediately. Not something you want. 65, 72, 62, 64, and 54. And that's not 6, so one more. <laughs> 66. Awesome. Okay, so that's actually probably industry average. So 65% of the people that come to your website leave immediately. Shocking, I know. Now, uh, the next thing is to convert this to a data frame. Now, it's not always going to be this simple, but with a dictionary it is because the dictionary just suits a data frame really easily. So we can say df equals pd. That's referencing pandas. Now we're going to say pandas data frame. Note the caps, capital D, capital F there, and then web stats. Boom, we have created ourselves a data frame. Now, when you're working with pandas and you do changes or you, you make something, a data frame, whatever, you know, just writing it out, I'm confident, you know, that made a data frame, but I can't see it. And that's why people love GUIs. Uh, and that's why people like Excel over programming, because with Excel they can visually see it. Well, with, with Pandas you can visually see it too. So what you can do is you can say print, and you could print the entire data frame, so DF. And again, DF uh, is just used as shorthand. Um, it's a standard. Generally, if you make a data frame, you call it DF. But that's not, that's like the least restrictive of all of these uh, standards. If if you want to call your data frame something else, like before we called it, I think XOM, it was it was more it, at least it made sense to have that variable name. So especially if you're going to have like five data frames, it would it would be very unclear. Even if you call them DF one, two, three, four, five, that would be really messy. It's it's better to call them something that relates to the data frame. Okay, so anyway, uh, so you could call this you know stats or something like that, but we'll just call it data frame. So you can print out the data frame F five to run it, save good. Um, and there we have uh, our information. You'll notice that we've got the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over here. Again, that's the index. Now, if you don't specify an index, everything is treated as a normal column, and uh, an index will just be kind of generated automatically for you. But later on, we'll be talking about uh, in this tutorial how to set a specific index, uh, and we'll talk about why you would do that in a moment. Now that's our entire data frame. So that's six rows. Now you can reference just a specific um, section by doing print df.head, okay? And df.head just prints the first five rows, zero, one, two, three, four. Conversely, we can also do df.tail, and that prints the last five. Finally, what we could do is uh, you can do 
maybe you just want to print the last two. Well, you can throw a two in there as a parameter, and this will print only the last two columns. So that would be right here. Pretty cool. Um, so you'll find yourself using df.head basically every time you know you apply maybe a calculation, you create a new column based on some logic or something like that. It's always a good idea to just kind of output that that data frame to the console so you can actually see what you're doing. If you're working in uh, most interactive development um, editors, you're gonna see the data frame anyways every time you redefine it. So um, so that's one of the bonuses to using like an IPython notebook. A lot of people have been asking me, hey man, you ever heard of IPython Notebook? Yes, I have. I just don't like them very much. I'm trying. I want to like them very badly. I just simply don't. Anyway, uh, so that's uh, printing out the actual data frame so you can see what you're doing. Now let's set an index. Why might we have an index, first of all? The index is basically what how all your data is either related or how you want to visualize it related. So for us, Maybe we want to relate the day, uh, like, you know, the most obvious index for this data would be day, right? So if you have any sort of time series data, generally the index is going to be the day. Uh, but if you've got a website, maybe you would want your index to be visitors, and then you want to know, you know, maybe what are the, you know, you've got visitors, but then you've also got bounce rates, and maybe you've got you know referrals and stuff like this and you want to see how how everything interacts with a certain data point like visitor count or something like that you know you never know what you might want to do and you can have multiple indexes uh, I wouldn't I've never needed multiple indexes but you can do it and I, there's a few reasons why you might do it but it doesn't make much reason to cover that right now so the way that you can set an index is just df.set underscore index to uh, and we'll say day. Now, if I do something like this, print df .set index today, and run that, you'll see the return is the entire data frame with um, day now being the index. But then later on, we're going to you know, be epic programmers. We're going to do a bunch of calculations, blah, 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 blah. And then we go print df.head. And then we're gonna, we see this first one, which is the way we wanted it. And then we get the second one, and it's like, we're like, what What happened here? We lost our index. <laughs> right? That's really annoying. And uh, this is something that's going to slap you in the face a few times, at least. But what happens here is when you modify the data frame like this, what, what actually is happening here is when you say df.setIndexDay, you are returned a new data frame. Okay, so that's why this print statement worked out for you. You're, you're returned a new data frame, and that's going to be the same thing if you're in an interactive development, uh, like in a, let's say, IPython notebook. You're going to be returned the data frame, it's going to look great, and you're going to be like, yeah, cool, and then you're going to keep going on, and then suddenly your, your index is no longer. Well, <laughs> what's happening is it's just returning a new data frame. So what you have to do is one of two things. One, one way that you can handle for this is you can create... Uh, well, I'm going to leave this code here just simply because I usually post up the code, but actually, well, I'm just going to comment it out. Um, anyway, one way that you can do it is you can say something like this, df equals df.setIndex today, and then you could print you know, df.head, and that's going to work just fine, okay? But that's kind of sloppy, and but you could also say like maybe you want to make a new data frame out of it, so you could say df2. Okay, so they leave that there so you can make your choice if you want to set a new data frame. So obviously df2 equals that, so then if we print a df2.head, you would get the newer. Right, so they give you the option whether you want to keep your original data frame or not. Now, what if you don't want to do this like double, you know, this equals nonsense? Well, the other way that you can do this is you can just say df.setIndex today, and then you can specify in place equals true, and this will modify the data frame right then and there, and we can say df.head, run that, and uh, there you go. So that happens. So uh, you can try to internalize this as much as possible. I still get slapped by this. Maybe you guys are better than me, but uh, that's something that's going to hit you if you find out that you know these various changes you're making just for whatever reason aren't showing up. It's not just when you set the the index. There's a bunch of these uh, commands that you're going to do and then you're going to think it worked and then <laughs> later on you're going to realize it didn't work because you didn't either set it in place or redefine it. Moving on.
uh, let's make some space here, uh, to reference a specific column. So right now we only have two columns. You've got day as the index, and then you've got the column of visitors in the column of bounce rate. To reference a specific column, it's pretty simple. You would say df, and then like it's a dictionary, square brackets, and then visitors. Visitors. We're going to save and run that. And there we go. We got just the column visitors, just the information and all that. Now, you might actually want this to be like a list or even a NumPy array. We'll talk about that. Don't you worry. Close this. Uh, another way that you can reference just a specific column is you can use uh, as if it's like an attribute. So you could say print df dot visitors. Okay, so we'll get two outputs of visitors here identical there's no difference okay so if you'll notice up here in bounce rate I put an underscore this allows you to use that dot uh, like it's an attribute uh, if you want if you leave a space that's totally fine you can reference it like this but you obviously cannot do dot bounce space rate that would be a syntax error right so you can't do that okay but of course you could do you know bounce rate um, actually, let's just return this. Uh, you could do, oops, you could take bounce rate with the space here, copy, paste, save and run that, and that's totally fine. You can do that. So you might find data sets have spaces there, so you won't be able to do this kind of notation, but you can you can still handle spaces. That's fine. So now the next thing that we're going to go ahead and cover is so that's how you can reference like a single column if you wanted. Now, how do you reference multiple columns if you want? You can reference the entire data frame, as we've already shown, but how do you reference multiple columns? Well, what you can do is you could say print df, like you're going to reference a column, only this time we're referencing a list of columns, so two you know, square brackets within square brackets, and this is a list, okay? So we can say we want to reference, and I'm going to go ahead and add that under case again because I want that uh, there. Now we can reference bounce rate visitors. Visitors. Okay. So that'll print um, just those columns. Now, obviously, we had other information, and so those are the only two columns that we had. But if you just want to reference two columns, that's how you would do it. Finally, how do we reference, how do we convert this to maybe a list? Okay. So what we could do is we could say print df dot visitors visitors.toList. I'm going to comment these things out right here. Save and run that. And sure enough, that's been converted to a list. Now with Python, there is no such thing natively as an array. You have lists, and then you've got multidimensional lists, like lists within list. Lists in a list is totally valid. But as you will find here in just one moment, well, what if we did this? What if we took this original, df that? So we'll say print. Uh, that information dot two list. So right, those were the two columns of data. What if we tried that? Ah, shucks, we can't do that. Not two list. That's not going to work out. So it has no attribute because it's a, it's a, it's being treated like it's an array. So what we're going to have to do instead is uh, come up to the very top, import NumPy as NP because that's what the people do, and then <laughs> we'll do this instead of dot two list print np.array, so we're converting this to an array, close off everything, save and run that, bada boom bada bing, you have your list up here and your array down here. Now of course you could convert this to an array too, that's totally fine. Uh, but for those of you who are familiar with other data science libraries, NumPy arrays are basically integral. Okay, so uh, that's what you have to um, do to convert. Now the final question would be, of course, you know, can you do this? Can you say df2 equals pd dot data frame, and we want to convert that. Print df2, save and run it. Wouldn't you know it, there it is. So uh, let's say you're working, I don't know, with um, OpenCV, and you've got things that have been converted to pixel arrays. Can you put it into a pandas data frame? You sure can. So really easy input output. Obviously here we've just done dictionaries and numpy arrays, but we'll be talking about how you can do you know CSV files and stuff like that uh, as we continue along the series. So 
That was a lot of information being thrown at you in a relatively short amount of time. We're coming up on 15 minutes, so I guess not too short, but it was a lot of information. If you have any questions or comments, concerns, suggestions, whatever, feel free to leave them below. If this was too fast or whatever, again, there is a text-based version of this tutorial on pythonprogramming.net. I will usually link to that specific tutorial in the description. Otherwise, this is a data analysis tutorial. You go to pythonprogramming.net, dashboard, data analysis, there it'll be. So, anyways, uh, that's where you can go if you're looking for more information. Um, otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.